Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome to episode Go Fuck Yourself for the Spears Sunnies podcast. I'm your host, Lewis Spears. Uh, I am uh, recording this one on a Friday morning, uh, and I have not slept since Thursday night. Uh, I've been awake for 24 hours. I don't know. I don't know how time works, man, when you've been awake. When, when did I sleep last? I slept Thursday night. At like 11 p.m. And I've been awake. I don't know. I've been awake since then. Do the math, you fucking nerds. I've been awake a long time. Uh, I, <laughs> I went out uh, last night, which turned into an hour ago, I'd, which is when I just left. Uh, went out with Max Mofo, uh, my mate, for a special occasion. We ended up at Crown. Uh, and, uh, next thing I knew it was fucking seven in the morning. And I was like, oh, I need to do it. I need to go home and do a fucking podcast. Uh, so here I am. I, I'm at the warehouse and doing a podcast. Uh, I've got the new microphone. Thank you for to everyone who gave me the the feedback on the microphone sound. Uh, overall, obviously, everyone likes it a lot better, which is great. I think it's a lot better. Uh, there are a lot of people saying that the old microphone was uh, was better. Uh, to those people, I would like to say that your opinion is incorrect. It wasn't. It's not better. It's not. It was fucking echoey. It was tinny. It sounded shit house. This microphone is objectively better in every way. It just, I've been thinking about it. There was about, I don't know, 10 people that were like, oh, the old one was better. And you know what I've realized? It's like, no, the old one wasn't better. You just fucking hate change. You hate change. You hate it when shit changes. And hey, hey, man, hey, change happens. All right. Change is part of life. Get used to it. It's how you improve. It's different. I don't like different. Fucking, this is so much better, man. You can actually fucking hear me for once when you got headphones on. It's actually loud enough. Um, so yeah, I had, I had a good li- good night last night. Went to Crown the Casino here. I, I do. I don't gamble. I fucking hardly ever do. This is a very rare moment in my life where I was like, yeah, I'm having fun with Max. It's a special occasion. I'll just do it. So I did. I ended up up for the night, which was great because I, dude, I, dude, I'm, I'm like gonna, I, I have a, I, I do lifetime records, man. I think I've gambled. I reckon I've gambled at Crown twice. I'm fairly certain last night and then when I was 18 was the only times I've ever, ever, ever gambled, and I'm like at a lifetime up. I'm so stoked with it. No, this would be my third time gambling because I went twice when I was 18. The first time I went, I lost and I, I couldn't handle it. I couldn't handle it. I, I only lost like something like fucking, you know, what can you lose when you're 18? Like I lost like $40 and I was like, nah, I couldn't handle it. There's no way that Crown can have that holding over me. Them having a lifetime win over me. Fuck that. I went back. I ended up winning $80 and I was like, fuck yeah, that's, a, that's millions, 80 bucks. And then that's it. Who the fuck's calling me? Hang on a second. Hello? Oh, sorry. I had just had to, um, <laughs> I just had to give someone, uh, give a fake reference over the phone, which I love doing. I love being, bro, do you know how many businesses I run? <laughs> I've been, no shit. I do, I do this all the time. I'm so good at giving fake references because you know what it is? It's, it takes me back to my days of selling over the phone. That's the only job that I loved, which was just selling over the phone. And selling over the phone is just telling big fucking lies. And I love that shit. I've been, dude, I've been a pharmacist. Uh, and I've been a, a carpenter. I've been uh, an office manager. I've been the head of a, a touring company. I've been... Uh, a online marketing professional. I've done so many jobs for three minutes over the phone for a fucking reference. It's insane. I love doing that shit. So, hey, if you ever need a reference, fucking hit me up. I'll give you one. (laughs) I should start charging for this shit. Because you know what? I have never given a reference and then that person has not got the job. I'm so fucking good at it. What was I talking about? Oh, yeah. I'm at a lifetime... I'm in a lifetime positive ratio with, with Crown. And and you know what? I'll never go back. I'll never go back. So I've been three times. 
man, you see some fucking terrifying shit in there. Like, you see that, like, because I was there, I was there for hours, and I wasn't gambling, I was just hanging out with friends. Like, I don't want to fucking waste money on that dumb shit. Um, I was just hanging out with friends, and, dude, you see some sad cunts. When you're there at fucking 4 a.m. on a Thursday morning, and you see, like, so many people just playing the fucking pokies. At, at 4 a.m. on Thursday morning. I mean, I know I'm judging the cunts, even though I was fucking there, but I wasn't blowing money. I was just having a good time with my friends while they blew their money, mind you. It was fucking nuts, dude. Just watching people put money in the bin. Those pokey machines. At least, at least with, like, blackjack and poker, which is what we were playing, there's, like, a, a, at least a little bit of skill... Or maybe not skill, but at least there's a method to, oh, I'm going to try and get under 21, or whatever the fuck the name is, the rules are. But with pokies, you literally just sit there and press the fucking button, beep, 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 for hours, and you saw them. It was fucking crazy. Man. I've, I've been doing some weird gigs recently, dude. I've been doing some fucking strange gigs. Uh, <laughs> last weekend, I believe, I hosted uh, the reunion, which is uh, a rap battle event hosted by, uh, organized by Greeley, uh, co-hosted by me and him. And Greeley's a really good friend of mine. He has been for years, and he's uh, just just really involved in the in the rap battle scene here in Australia. And uh, I got to co-host this rap battle event, and fuck, that was one of the weirdest gigs I've ever done in my life. So, what it was, is it was like, there were six, I think six battles, and a rap battle is is literally two rap artists, or rap battle artists, insulting each other in rhyme form. And then everyone goes, oh, sick burn. Oh, that one rhymed. Oh, look at that rhyme scheme. It's fucking crazy as shit, dude. So this rap battle event was 450 people in the audience, all standing. Weirdest gig I've ever done in my life. And it's all like fucking esche as fuck lads. Like hectic lads, dude. Everyone was wearing a polo. Everyone was wearing tans. Everyone probably had a knife. It was full on fucking hectic. There was security everywhere. It was a rowdy night, right? And I'm co-hosting this thing. I'm not a rap artist. I don't make music. Well, I've made a little bit of music, but I'm not going to perform it because that shit's way too hard. I don't have the skill set. So the night starts at like 8.30. Well, the night was supposed to start at 8.30. I end up getting on stage at like 9.40 or something because it's an Oz rap gig. So of course it starts late. So I get on stage, Greeley introduces me, and he tells a little bit of backstory about, about me and him, like uh, back when when I was starting out, I used, I used to just hang out at his place in fucking Seaford, which is near Frankston, real shithole area, and he would smoke bongs, and I would, I would just sit in the room, not realizing that I, that I was probably catching a contact high. So he starts off talking about how I, how I don't do drugs and how I don't drink, <laughs> And then and he, he did a little bit about that. And then I get on stage and uh, I'm like, hey, how you going, guys? My name's Lewis Spears. Uh, Grilly's right. I, uh, I don't drink. I don't smoke weed. And then 450 people just went, boo! <laughs> the whole, f- the, like within 30 seconds, I'm like, hello, guys. I'm not a drug addict. Boo! Do some meth, you fucking loser! 450 people just fucking booing. It was fucking so funny. But anyway, I, to- I called them all cunts and I told them to shut up. Uh, and then they started listening, which is good. Uh, and then I start doing my material. Uh, and, you know, have you ever... You know you- how you go to a music concert, right? And everyone's there for the main act. So... The opening acts, only about, only about 50% of people listen to them and everyone else just talks because that's just normal. That was happening with me. But because I'm talking, 
I'm competing with like 200 people that were just talking and not listening. So it was this, it was so weird. I've never done a gig like it. Everyone was standing, everyone was drinking and I was crushing, man. I was crushing. Everyone that was paying attention to me was pissing themselves, but that was only about half the people. <laughs> so anyway, I do, I do my set and, um, I'm doing all right. Uh, I end up, I end up pulling through. I just, I, I literally screamed my way through my jokes like I came out just punching. I did the well bit straight away uh, from the comedy special and I just yelled it. I was like, oh, I don't want to sponsor a fucking idiot and just trying to get everyone's attention. And I ended up getting, like, I reckon I got about 70% of the room listening to me uh, by the end of my set. And then I ended up, it ended up going really well at the end. So that was great. Uh, but I get off stage and there's this dude in the front row, yelling at me, screaming at me, just by himself. He was like real short dude, just screaming at me. You're not funny, bro. You fucking suck. You're a fucking dog cunt. You're not funny, bro. You think you're fucking funny? And I was just bemused. I was just looking at, because I'm on stage. So I was just looking at him and I was like, oh yeah, I was just nodding my head. I, you know, I'm a cunt. I was, you know what? I was making him angrier because that amuses me personally. Oh, look, an angry person who didn't like my jokes, probably got offended by him. I know what I'll do. Ruin his fucking night. You think you're angry now? Wait until I smile and wave at you. <laughs> so I'm on stage smiling and waving at this cunt who's just screaming at me. You're not fucking funny, bro. You're a dog cunt. Rah, rah, rah. Just like really, really like angry, angry yelling. So anyway, that happened. And then I, I thought nothing of it. Uh, the rap battles happened. Uh, that went on. The, the actual main event, the rap battle bit, went on for about three hours. Uh, I think all of the rap battles will actually be posted on YouTube. So you'll see me standing behind the artist, just pissing myself at all of the rape jokes and the pedo stuff. Um, <laughs> so, anyway, yeah, so the rap battles happen. Three hours go by after my set. And then the, the night ends. It was a great success. It was fucking amazing. Uh, I think the standout battles for, for me was uh, Manners Ill. Uh, killed it as always. And then uh, the, other, the other battle, the, the final battle, Dundee versus Cogs, was a fucking really good. So those will be coming out online soon. I'll put them in the podcast group uh, if you guys want to see them. So anyway, that all, that all happens. And then, right, the night's over. And uh, I'm just hanging out, just talking with friends, getting photos with people who came because uh, I reckon about half the people there knew who I was. That's probably why fucking half the people were listening and everyone else was like, what? This isn't rap. It's not fucking battles. It doesn't rhyme. Why would I listen? <laughs> um, and the guy who was yelling at me three hours ago comes up again, just as angry, which means he sat there for three hours thinking about my fucking jokes. And, he's, and he gets in my face. And he's quite short. He's like under six foot. So like the height difference is insane. And he gets in my face and he starts yelling at me. Uh, and I won't ruin it because it's going to be in an upcoming show. But um, in my next tour, I was talking about pedophilia and pedophiles. <laughs> because of course I was. And I did the well joke from the special. And then I did like a, a silly cruise bit that I'm working on at the moment for the next tour as well. Right, so I did so two fucked up bits, one bit about a boat, and um, he gets in my face and he like starts yelling at me. He goes, "Bro, you can't fucking talk about that shit. You can't talk about that shit, man. It's racist." And I was like, "What? What was racist?" And he goes, "That fucking joke about the orphan, man. It's racist." I'm like, "How is it racist?" And he goes, Bro, "Have have you ever lived that life, man? Have you ever lived that life? People have to walk fucking walk kilometers to go to the well." And I was like, no. He goes, well, you can't joke about it. You haven't lived that life. And I said, have you? <laughs> I was just like, well, this cunt's going to yell at me in my face. I'm going to make him even angrier. And he's screaming at me. He goes, you can't joke about that, man. This shit is real, bro. It's fucking real. And, I, and like of all places to get my... Mo I've never seen anyone so angry and offended over fucking jokes. And of all places to get an offended idiot it'd be a rap battle show so he's getting in my face and he's screaming at me really really angry you can't joke about that man it's not fucking funny 
and I was like, hey, man, uh, I appreciate that. I just tried to be nice and reasonable at first, and I was like, hey, man, I appreciate that, but what you've got to understand is it's all jokes. It's not serious. And he's like, no, it's not funny, man. You can't fucking joke about that stuff. And just, she, it was like talking to a brick wall that got angrier and angrier. And he was like, you're going to get yourself hurt, man. You keep, do- you keep doing that joke, you're going to get yourself hurt. And I was like, dude, that joke is three years old. I've done it probably in front of about 7,000 people. And I have never had a single person try to hurt me after it. And he's like, you're... Oh, he just starts screaming at me. You had two jokes, man. You had two jokes. One was about African orphans, and the other one was about pedophiles. That's fucked up, man. You think that shit's funny? And I said, actually, I had three jokes. The other one was about cruise ships. Can I joke about cruise ships? <laughs> I was like, can I joke about cruise ships? Is that okay with you, man? And he just lost it. He's like, you're going to get yourself hurt. You're going to get yourself hurt, man. You will. And I was like, dude, I think I'm going to be fine. All right? No one's going to fucking hurt me over some jokes. And then he, then he starts really arcing up. He's like, you're fucking wrong, man. I really want to hit you. I really want to hit you right now. And I was like, all right, well, then I don't want to talk to you. And then I just started to walk away. And he's like, are you fucking walking away from me? Are you walking away? And that's when security noticed that this dude's like really angry and they noticed that I was a performer. Uh, so security came up. They were great. They separated us. He was like, is this guy all right? And I was like, I don't know, man. He's offended over jokes. And the security guard was like, isn't that, I don't know, isn't that jokes? And I'm like, yeah, I, I don't know. Uh, ask him. So they separate us and the guy fucks off. And then I get off the stage to like hang out, hang out with some more people that wanted photos and stuff. Um, but then he comes back and he starts yelling at me and he's even fucking angrier. He's like, you're going to get yourself hurt, man. He's like, what's your name? Lewis Spears, yeah? Lewis Spears. And I was like, yeah. And he goes, I'll remember that name. I'll remember you. And I was like, all right, bro. <laughs> Good on you. There's a lot of people that know my name. You, you're, you, you're not the first one to learn it. I was just, I was just shit. I was fucking with him. And, and this, at this point, and, and this is probably a bad thing. But I knew that this cunt was going to start swinging. I knew. Like, it was at that point. I'm like, okay, this guy's going to f- try and fight me because I'm not caving in to his whatever the fuck he wants. And he's that dumb that he's going to resort to violence. So, and, and, and when, I, when I realized that this guy was going to try and bash me, all I could think was, fuck. This is going to make the, if I get punched in the face, this is going to make the best podcast story. <laughs> That's all I can think. It wasn't like, oh, I should make sure I'm safe. Where's security? Can I beat this guy in a fight? Should I run away? It was like none of that self-preservation shit. It was like, man, if this is a fight, it's going to make the best fucking story. <laughs> so he's getting in my face. But the thing is, I'm, I got off stage and I'm surrounded by like 20 people who liked the set they're either old fans or new people who who enjoyed it so they're trying to get a photo or whatever and there's this one dude just scream and he was by himself he had no friends there so he was by himself so the dude had fucking balls i'll give him that uh and he was just surrounded by people who disagree with him and there was it was all these dudes t- trying to take selfies with me so there, i've got one guy on my left screaming in my face seeming like he's going to try and beat the fuck out of me. And then I got a guy on my left being like, hey man, can I take a selfie? So I'm like looking at this guy's camera, but also trying to keep an eye on the dude who's trying to kill me. I'm like swiveling backwards and forwards. And then I'm like, I'm thinking like, dude, one of these selfies, it's going to be like one photo will be me smiling and the other photo will be like a fist just coming into frame to fucking knock my teeth out while I'm taking a selfie. And anyway, he starts screaming at me. And uh, he's like, I'll remember you, man. Oh, you better fucking watch yourself. I know your name, Lewis Spears. I know your name, man. You better not be fucking doing those jokes anywhere else in Melbourne. And I was like, yeah, good on you, cunt. And that's when I, st- I started to get angry. I was like, what do you want? I said, <laughs> I was, I- this is what I said. He goes, you better not do those jokes. And I was like, are you going to come to a show? Would you ever buy a ticket? He's like, nah, man, I would never see you. And I was like, all right, so then why would I stop doing the jokes if you're never going to buy a ticket? I don't benefit from that at all. If you're never going to come. I mean, I said, hey, if you, if, if you buy a ticket, 
I'll promise you I th- I'll think about changing the jokes. <laughs> and that just fucking set him off. And that's when Greeley noticed that this guy is like screaming at me and Greeley walks over and gets in his face and it was the weirdest, most aggressive discussion about offensive jokes I've ever witnessed in my life. Greeley just gets in his face and he's like, fuck off, cunt, fuck off, cunt, offense is taken, not given, fuck off, cunt, if you're offended, that's your choice, comedy is comedy, if you don't like it, fuck off, cunt. And then the dude ended up just like screaming at me like, I'll remember you, you fucking dog. You better not tell that fucking pedo joke. You better not do those fucking pedo jokes. You can't screaming at me. And I'm, and I'm, and security is like taking him out at this point. And I'm like waving him goodbye. I'm like, I'm definitely going to do them. I'm doing them. In, I'm doing them soon. I'm, I'm going on to it soon, man. I'm going to do them at the show just for you. I'm going to dedicate them to you, man. <laughs> So, uh, hey, I don't know. Maybe I'll, I, I'm, I'm, now I'm really looking forward to doing those jokes. And you know what? They're, they're fucking great jokes, man. I've been doing them for a while now and they're real good. I know it was just amusing to me that I would have, that's the most offended I've ever seen someone to the point where it, like that was that if, if security didn't set in, step in, that was going to be a fight. And that's when I once when I realized something about myself is you know how there's like fight or flight. You know how you have that when you're in a situation. Most you know you're either you're either fight and you get the adrenaline and you stay there and you try and win the fight, or you have flight. You get the adrenaline and you use it to run away. What I have is neither. I have the adrenaline takes my mind out of my body and I become an observer. I'm like, oh, what's going to happen now? Oh. Lewis could get punched in this situation. That could be interesting. I just get detached. And I don't know if that's... I, that's probably a bad thing. I'm not there. I'm just think. As soon as someone starts threatening my life, I start thinking about what a good story it will make when I get out of hospital. <laughs> but I don't know. Yeah, if like that, that dude was a fucking idiot. Because as soon as everyone else noticed that he was arcing up to me, he was surrounded by 20 people who disagreed with him. And they, and it, it, it got to the point where I was like, no, leave him alone. Don't follow him outside the venue. He doesn't need to get fucking king hit in the street. I don't need that on my conscience. It's like, dude, the, the, the amount of fucking balls you would have to try and fight the artist at the gig. At least wait for me to leave, you fucking idiot. Thank fuck he didn't, actually. <laughs> So that was an that was an eventful time, but yeah, the the reunion battle event was fucking so good, man. Like the, I don't know if you guys have seen many rap battles, but I reckon really hang out for these because they were they were hilarious on the night, and also there were so many pedophile jokes in in like three of at least half of every fucking rap battle was pedo bars. And I said that to the guy, he's like, you can't joke about pedophiles, man, it's fucked up. And I said, did you not see this artist, this artist, and that artist talk about pedophilia? Didn't you? He's like, nah, it's different, man, it's different. And I said, why? Because it rhymes? (laughs) I'm such a cunt, man. See, that's my problem. Is whenever I, I that that's why I just don't I don't have the self preservation thing. I just think anything's if I'm if I'm gonna lose my teeth or like destroy my reputation. I just think it's very funny. It's bad, man. And that shit that shit generally means I get a great story that I can turn into a joke later. But at some point, it means I'm gonna get a great story that I won't be able to tell because someone's broken my fucking jaw. But until then, man, I'll keep bringing gems back to the podcast. What else did I want to talk about? Um, oh, that's right. Oh, I, 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 I um, flew to Gold Coast recently. Uh, on I flew to Gold Coast on Wednesday. Uh, I flew up to hang out with Josh Wade and do the Josh Wade show, his podcast. Um which I, I imagine will be coming out in the next couple of weeks. I actually don't know. I should ask him when it'll be out, but I'll post it in the in the podcast group, the Spear and Sunday's podcast group when it's out. Um, 
which is uh, and and that was a really that was a really interesting talk, man. It was uh, it was good to do. I like doing the Josh Wade show because it's very very different. We um we talked about my childhood of all things. I felt like I did a fucking mini therapy session <laughs> with Josh. Um, so that was cool to do. That'll be coming out soon. I'm just uh, just really wrapping up the promo for the for the comedy special because the tour. Well, the tour is on sale next week, man. Um, so I put up the Dreamworld clip last night, uh, and that's that's going all right. I don't know, man. It's weird. My uh, the the YouTube views on the on the stand up clips are and it shits me because they're lower than the regular videos, which are definitely not as good. But I don't know. I guess I've I guess the it's because most people have seen the the whole special, so why would they fucking watch the little clips? I don't know, it's just the kind of thing that I, that I guess will sit there and will tick over with views, and it, it's really just to show people, like, if they're, if, they're, if they're like, oh, should I see him live, is he actually funny, they can watch that and be like, oh yeah, he's, he's fucking good, I'll see him. Um, I don't know, YouTube's interesting, I'm, I'm, trying to, I'm trying to come back a little bit on YouTube, because I think I let it slip, just because of the amount of fucking new shit I did this year. Like with the radio show and the comedy special crowd fun and then the tour that just wrapped up and now the new tour coming up. It's like so many different new fucking things that I've been doing. Uh, I haven't really been doing any basic, you know, just regular fucking YouTube videos where I'm not promoting something. So I think really that's my goal this year is just to fucking go back to basics and just pump out videos and, and do what I love and just try and blow up. I really want to get, I really want to try and hit that 300,000 subscriber mark by the end of the year, which is a pretty ridiculous goal. But I'm, I'm almost at 200. It, it, you know, it is possible, but I'm just going to, instead of aiming at subscribers, really, I'm just going to try and aim for at least one video a week. I've been doing, been doing two a week now for almost a month, which is good. And I think I can keep that up because I've just, um, just started working with a new editor, thanks to all of the Patreon people, and that's going really well. Uh, he's a good kid and he knows what he's doing. So hopefully that will continue to go well, um, and uh, I'll just be able to stay on top of content. So, yeah, man, dude, uh, fucking, <laughs> fucking uh, last radio show that I did, the Luke and Lewis show last Sunday, man. I our dude, our show sucks. Our show, our show is fucking. Bad radio, and that's the appeal. We suck at radio, and we excel at creating garbage content. We, like, take a poo, and we polish it until it's a diamond. That's our show, is picking shit up off the street and turning it into great content. You know what I did last Sunday? Keep in mind, this is the biggest radio station in the country. Massive opportunity, right? We're incredibly young to be on this fucking station. Huge platform, huge opportunity for us. Last Sunday, during a talk break, no, during a song, I went to do a shit and it took... <laughs> and it took... It took a whole song. I thought two songs were going to play... So I'm in the bathroom and the radio's playing throughout the building so you can kind of know what's going on no matter where you are, you know where you're at. So the song is playing and I'm like, oh yeah, this song goes for about three and a half minutes, cool. And then, then another one will play, seven minutes, that's enough to shit. And then I come back and get in the studio and jump on the mic. So the song's playing and I'm you know, doing my business and then I'm like finishing up almost and then the song starts to end. I'm like, all right, cool, here comes the next uh, song. And uh, then what I hear is uh, Luke saying, uh, it's Luke and Lewis on, on Fox. And uh, actually, it's just Luke at the moment. I think Lewis is in the bathroom. And I, <laughs> I was fucking shitting while we were supposed to be on air. And, and you know what the funniest thing is? I was like, eh, I'm not going to rush. This will be funny. <laughs> I just wanted to hear him struggle for a little bit. And, and anyway, so I, I finish up and I run back in while Luke, Luke and Mike are just making fun of me for shitting what I'm meant to be on air. I jump back in the studio. We have some banter about it. And then it was really fucking funny. And then we, we go to another song and everyone's laughing, taking the piss out of each other. And I talked to Luke and I found out that, that he had the option to add another song to make sure that I would make it back in time, but he thought it would be funnier to come on air while I'm shitting 
and just make fun of me for it. And you know what? He was so fucking correct. And like, that's the kind of shit where if it was any other show, that'd be like, bad, bad mistake. But us, we just find it fucking hilarious. I saw some comment under one of our videos from some dumb joke we did where it was, um, <laughs> it just said something along the lines of these guys just shit post on radio and it's so fucking true. That's our show. Oh man. I need to get, um, I need to, uh, I don't have, I don't, I still don't have the fucking internet. I think there's not going to be no miscellaneous bit at the end guys. I think this podcast is going to be a little bit short. Um, because, uh, I don't know, a couple things happen and I'm just going to save it for the stage because it's just too good for the podcast. Hey, sorry. Sorry, ladies and gentlemen. You want the good stuff, you got to pay for it. Um, yeah, so this one's, I'm going to have to cut it a bit short. I don't have the fucking internet in this fucking warehouse yet. They told me it would be done this week. It is not done this week. I've been running, absolutely running through my fucking mobile data and I can't do it anymore. Otherwise, I'm going to go fucking broke. Um, so... No emails. You guys are welcome. No miscellaneous bit at the end, which is the worst part of the podcast. You guys are welcome. You're safe from fucking necking yourself for an, for at least another week. Um, but th- you know what? I'm just going to wrap it up there. Otherwise, I'm just going to be fucking rambling and I'm really, I'm really tired. I haven't slept yet. So sorry that this one wasn't the funniest fucking episode, but at least I got a story out about some cunt trying to kill me over a pedo joke, which is good. Um, and that's, 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 that wasn't even the worst thing that happened at the show. I think I'm saving that for... For, for a gig as well I'm gonna I don't know I'll do it and if it's not funny I'll just tell it next week <laughs> um, but yeah thank you very much for listening guys uh, I want to let you guys know that um, tickets for my uh, tour my fourth tour they are going to go on sale on Thursday general public sale on Thursday uh, but the pre-sale is happening this Tuesday so if you're listening to it on Sunday that is two days away so on Tuesday at 7.30 p.m. Melbourne time, Melbourne, Sydney time. Uh, pre-sale will happen. To to get access to the pre-sale, you need to be signed up to lewspears.com slash gig list. You just tuck your name and your email and your city in there and you will get an email with a code to access the pre-sale. You can... Buy as many tickets as you need. So you can put one... If you're the organized mate, get jump on there and then organize your three friends. Tickets will be about... Between thirty-two to thirty-five dollars, I believe, uh, and there's also like merchandise packs and shit if you want to pre pre grab a t-shirt or pre grab a poster and all that kind of stuff. Um, but yeah, I would really, really recommend you get tickets during the pre-sale because uh, just looking at it, we've definitely fucking underbooked the tour. Just looking at how many comedy specials have sold uh, and how big I am online. Uh, compared to when we booked the tour, which was like over a year ago. Uh, we definitely underbooked it, which is a good problem to have because hopefully every show, will that means we'll sell out now. Uh, but there are twice as many people on the gig list than there are tickets available. And generally in my experience, uh, half the people on the gig list buy tickets and those people buy at least two because everyone brings a mate. So if, uh, if half of the people on the gig list buy tickets and they bring a mate... Uh, there's not, I mean, there's, that's twice as many tickets that, that are available. So I gen, I genuinely recommend you get on the pre-sale because otherwise you may miss out. The whole fucking thing could go in pre-sale. Um, I don't really know. I've, I'm, we're in unexplored territory with this because it's never been this fucking big before the tour has happened. So um, jump on the gig list if you want to get pre-sale tickets and make sure you do grab them before Thursday, especially because once general sale goes on and I'm making noise about it on YouTube and Facebook and everywhere else, you're, you're, you're running the risk of uh, missing out. So, um, yep, that's it. Sorry, this one was a short one, but um, better to do a short one than to fucking just pad out a bunch of garbage. All right, thank you very much. I'm going to talk to you next Sunday. Uh, next Sunday is going to be much less sleep deprived. I'm sorry I've done two fucking sleepy podcasts, but uh, you, your boy's been hustling. Um, 
crowdfunding and uh, Gumroad rewards are all being posted out. We've worked out the shipping. It's just taking a long time because there's a fuckload of stuff, but it's all coming. You guys should be getting emails pretty soon with uh, all your tracking and everything. We're sorting it all out. It's coming. Um, Sorry for the wait, but it is happening. And uh, yeah, that's the end of the podcast. Thank you very much for listening. Rate it. Join the podcast group. All that kind of shit. Um, I will talk to you next Sunday and I hope you have an incredibly shit one. Loosebeers.com slash gig list. Make sure you get get your tickets during the pre-sale and I will see you on tour in September, October, November. All right, that's it. That's the end. Uh, I'm going to go because clearly I can't even fucking speak English, let alone stay awake. All right, see you later, guys. Have a shit one.